Yo. Um, man, uh, y'all know I'll be doing all these rare books, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm always putting out books, always putting out movies, all the stuff that got to do with hip hop. Uh, at the end of the day, the reason I like doing all this stuff, all this stuff, uh, because I wanted to be an MC. It started off with hip hop, and then um, between hip hop, you start trying DJing, and then you get into b boying and break dancing. You always trying to do a hand, graffiti hand. I always tried to write my name Hakeem and tried to write in the wickets, right? So we all know that story, um, you know. But that the real reason I got into all this books and rare stuff because I wanted to be the MC. I wanted to be. You want to be that dude. You want to be that that superstar rapper around your way. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not going to go into the beginning of, of hip-hop, but when LL came out, my radio, nobody couldn't tell me nothing about LL. He was the rapper that I learned his rhymes, and I'm not the type of person that be learning rappers' rhymes. I never cared. I'm like, man, I rhyme myself. But when I heard, of course, when I heard Rappers of Light, that made me want to be a rapper. But when LL came out, a lot of rappers came out, and I was hype off all that. But when LL, my radio, because these were at the very beginning of, 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 um, of the rappers. I still put them in the same category, even though Cold Crush and all them came out. I still put all them in the same category as the year started progressing. But when LL came out. With my radio, I just was zoomed in to the ball. Like, yo, nobody couldn't tell me nothing about LL. You know what I'm saying? Um, my radio, believe me, I like it loud. All his 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 joints after that, you know, uh, three five seven breaking on down. Uh, you know, just all his stuff. You know, screw chew. So what's up, dude? One of my battles to get your girl is in the mood. Suck MCs really make me sick. I'm so bad. I and then, <laughs> you know, and then just uh, the whole 357, you know, and all that. You know what I mean? Uh, just all of that. Um, uh, ah, yeah. Uh, ah, uh, ah, yeah. All of that. From the from the bad album, uh, E Love. I wanted to find out where E Love was living. I wanted to find out where Farmers Boulevard was. I wanted to go to New. I would. Me and my brother would go to New York and hang on Forty Second Street. Not Forty Second Street the way it looked now. I'm talking about when it was like, you know, hookers, hoes, you know, pimp peep shows. You know, scumbag people on 42nd Street. Me and my brother was going there when we was young. We was going to New York at a young age by ourselves. You know, I'm talking 12 years old. We're going to New York, hanging on 42nd Street. You know what I'm saying? I went there with my uncles and all that, but sometimes me and my brother would go and we would travel up to the Bronx. And we was, like me, I was hoping to see LL. Damn, where LL live at? Where he... You know, and even before I knew about LL. So, the reason I do all this stuff, books, write my lead book, because I wanted to be in the rap game, and I wanted to be an MC. Let's get that straight, you know what I'm saying? Um, I put out this record uh, in 96, and I don't know what took me this long. But I put out a record in 96, and I wound up getting it played on the radio, and I got my little fame, Right? But that record started off for the whole, I want to make a name. I want to get known. I want somebody to know who I am. And I called it In Your Face, and I took one of LL's samples, and I sampled it. Because I wanted to be a part of that world, you know what I mean? And as time go on, you go, but damn, I could be the man. I want to write books. I want to do this. But it's it's all hip-hop. That's what everything I do, the books I do and all that. It's hip-hop. Malik B, the reason I wrote this book, because I wanted to be a part of that hip-hop. And Malik B, when I heard him in the Roots Crew, his rhymes, I didn't know. Because when it's two or three people in the group, I can't never decipher who's who. 
But with Malik B, I was always saying his rhymes. Like a nerve, oh, he's superb. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, hair and bone, her, hair and bone herbs, and just all his rhymes. I was into his rhymes and like, yo, this boy is dope, or the roots is dope. And I was saying I like the roots based off of a lot of Malik's rhymes. Not to discredit Black Thought, it's just he was the rhymes I was always saying when I heard Spark. You know, I was just like, oh my God, this boy's nuts. Clones. I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, what do you call it? I was, I would cling to his rhyme and his style. I'm like, yo, this the boy. You know what I'm saying? So, even before me, um, me, uh, Meek Mill, another one, I cling to him as me being older and still recognize that oomph that he had. But Malik, LL, um, Meek Mill, uh, MC Shan, the Scooby D, I just, I just gravitated. That's the word I'm looking for. Gravitated to their style. Study B when I heard Bring Me Beat Back. Well, like, and he just would rhyme. You know, who could it be? Study B, and he talking about the hilltop. You like, yo, he's talking about that. It made me want to be the man. So I, I, I came out in 96 with my record, and it was called Hot Blast In Your Face, no doubt. And I wanted, I was dissing the record label. That was my whole thing. I'm going to diss the record label. But my pattern was at the LL. And that's what made me, I, I patterned my rhyme, even though I wound up having my own style. But some cats dug the record. And I'm like, yo, I'm in the game. And then after that, I felt like I had to show people stuff. So when you want to show people stuff, you slow down, you back up, you know what I mean? You boom, you get out. But how can I still put my lyrics out and put my rhymes out? And you could do it in the book. So I did it in books. I would go, oh, I'm going to tell cats about the game. This is a rare book, too. Uh, the new hip-hop street book. Show them, don't tell them, because there ain't nobody going to listen till they see you popping. That was what I was feeling. Not just put I don't even put put no date in this joint. But um that's what I, that's that's what I did. I, I I I wrote this book on the strength for that. You know what I mean? This a uh, a book that I got. Um and then my man, James G. Spady, who passed away, he was working on a book and I met him, he was working on hip hop global cipher. This book right here. Like, I got this. Before that, I got another book. I'll show you this. But this book right here, bro, oh, my God. This has nothing but all rappers in here talking from their voice. See, I think this thing got how many pages? This got, this got, how many pages is this? This got 693 pages, man. I just wanted to be a part of the hip-hop game so bad. And when I seen my man Spady writing this, I'm like, yo. I went to his, his joint to get it. I bought this off of him. He wound up autographing the joint, you know what I mean? Um, and I just wanted to be a part of that, 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 that hip-hop mission, that hip-hop elevation, you know what I mean? LL is in this book, I think. I think LL. But... LL was somebody who I, 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 I mimicked my style behind uh, when I first started. And, of course, you elevated to your own drum. But this is called the Global Cypher. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be, this is James Spady. This is all, all rappers in here, and they're talking from their perspective. You know what I mean? They really talking from their perspective. This book, you probably can still get this on Amazon, but like I said, it's rare and it's going to cost you some money. I've seen this book online for about seven, dollars $800 now. You know what I mean? But this is a dope book called The Global Cypher. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is a book I put out. This is rare too because it's only, actually, I think I only got two copies. <laughs> so it is real rare. But I, I sold a lot of these. You know what I mean? Like I said, show them, I'm telling you how to uh, show and don't tell in the hip-hop game. You know what I mean? And, and and I did that in this right here, Malik B. You know what I mean? So that's my rare book session. You know what I mean? Talking about LL and 
how I really wanted to get in the game. And I still might still put out another album. Who knows? It don't matter how old you get. You're still going to have the same mind from when you still going to have a thought. That's why I tell people, rap to you like 90 years old. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, that's the rare books. I rap to y'all. Peace. Check out more books.